Yo what's up guys it's Atrix here today in this video we'll be taking a look at a brand new 3ds emulator for android devices known as mandarin 3ds emulator now the mandarin 3ds emulator is completely open source and available on its official github page it is supposed to be a fork version of the official citra android citra mmj citra enhanced edition and i am forgetting one another citra edition which i'll put on the screen right now it is from the same developer who created lot of citra forks previously called as gamer 64 ytb and here are the minimum requirements by the way this simulator is also available for PCs Windows 10 or above 4 GB of RAM is recommended and for Android devices Android 9 or above is the only minimum requirement a Snapdragon processor 835 or above doesn't really matter you only need OpenGL ES 3.2 or above along with 2 GB of RAM uh, so if you meet these minimum requirements you can easily try it out on your android devices and this is supposed to have lot of brand new settings to improve the performance of 3ds simulation on android to the next level so here is the first release of mandarin 3ds simulator android rework settings implement haptic feedback switch shader techniques optimize lot of stuff and yeah the full changelog is available on its official github page now what's new in the mandarin 3ds itself skip slow draw skip texture copy and skip cpu write have gotten rebranded to post hardware vertex shader disable surface texture copy etc new options got reordered and fixed all graphical issues of frame skip which is pretty amazing so what are we waiting for let's jump right into testing this brand new 3d simulator on our android devices now the setup is similar to that of the official citra android as it is a fork version of it so you can simply tap on the next button afterwards select the folder where you have stored the 3ds games afterwards tap on the next button and then tap on continue there we go mandarin 3ds emulator has successfully started and the layout is similar to that of yuzu emulator we can simply tap on the options option where we'll get lot of options including gpu driver manager so we can even import custom graphics driver to improve the performance by a lot Anyways in terms of settings let's go to general and here starts the best settings. You can enable frame skipping by 4x this is very amazing feature and definitely improves performance by a lot if you have low end android devices. It may cause emulation speed and desync issues that is one thing to note but if you are using a low end device and if you want better performance make sure to enable this option. You can also enable custom CPU ticks it will improve performance but if they are too high it may cause the game to freeze and then head on over to the graphics section. Now here are the most important part, make sure to set the graphics API to Vulkan if you have Android version 10 or above Android device but if you have a low end Android device go with OpenGL ES. For example devices with Mali GPU can also use OpenGL ES to get better performance in few devices on very low end Mali GPU Android device. SPIIV shader generation should be enabled along with asynchronous shader compilation. Native resolution make sure to set it to 2x or 3x depending on your device but I am going with 4x native resolution because my device has snapdragon 8 gen 3 processor. Linear filtering make sure to turn this off if you want better performance but if you want better visuals turn it on. Adreno GPU boost make sure to turn it on if you have a snapdragon processor it will provide you with the full potential of your android device but it may cause heating issue you can disable this option if your device heats quite a lot. Shader catch has been enabled which is very useful. In terms of tweaks we get hardware vertex shaders make sure to enable these three settings as I mentioned before they have been rebranded. Once that has been done simply swipe back let's go to debug make sure that new 3ds mode has been enabled afterwards cpu's clock speed is set at 400% make sure that enable vsync option is turned off so you can get more than 30 fps cpu jrt hardware shader should be turned on and yeah guys that's about it but you can also enable the reduced down count scale if you want to not utilize the full potential of your android device i don't know why you would want that so yeah let's just go ahead and scroll back and we have successfully applied the best settings the final step will be to simply import a graphics driver this is only supported on snapdragon processors use the latest mesa turnip adreno driver 24.3.0 revision 1 once that has been done, now we have applied the complete best settings and are all set to try out some 3ds games on our android devices. For today's video we will be trying out pokemon x so let's tap on it and see how well does it work inside the mandarin 3ds emulator. Now the show fps option has been turned off so to enable it just swipe back afterwards go to overlay option and make sure to tap on show fps. And there we go guys our game has successfully started but one thing which I forgot to tell you guys make sure to go to settings and go to general settings make sure that you have disabled the custom ticks option I had enabled it and I was getting only 7 fps so I disabled it so these features may be experimental anyways let's tap on the start option and see how well does our game work. 
Now you'll be able to see at the top left corner we are getting about 136 FPS and 500% off speed. Now this is completely unplayable experience as you might already know. So you can enable limit speed percent option if you want to get at least 60 FPS while emulating these games. I won't be enabling that option because we want to see the full potential of this emulator on my Android device and this is being emulated at 4x native resolution. So not the maximum resolution but still on low end devices you can set the resolution to 1x. And there we go, our game has successfully started. And we'll exit the house to find out how well does our game work in outside world areas. So there we go, we'll just quit our house or exit our house. And yeah, still we are getting almost more than 70 to 80 FPS, but there are a lot of stuttering issues as you will be able to see at the top left corner. The FPS is not stable 68, it is increasing and decreasing. So to fix it, you can enable VSync mode so that you don't face any stuttering issues. But now that we are able to control our character, let's find out if the gameplay experience is smooth. And I have to say it is pretty smooth aside from few stuttering issues which you don't really recognize because the game is running so fast. So would I recommend Mandarin 3D Simulator for Android? That would be a 100% yes because it is the only one and best 3D Simulator for Android devices for now with lot of customization tweaks and performance uh, improvements and also low end device support. So be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notification. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.